why some say the moon? Why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? Why, 35 years ago, fly the Atlantic? Why does Rice play Texas? We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win, and the others too. I want to tell you all a little part of my story, a little part of DeGreed's story. DeGreed was started in 2012. I had meager savings, started initially on my own, was married, had two kids, a four-year-old, a two-year-old. Would spend sort of that spring building the prototype, starting to build the website, would spend that summer pitching VCs. They all got very excited. They took me all the way through their process. And then I started receiving all the no's. No, no, no. No, no. Believing in this future as I did was recruiting, finding others to pull into this journey. By the back half of 2012, had about four and a half employees, but had run entirely out of money. There was no money in the corporate bank account. There was no more money in my personal bank account. We were existing on credit card debt. I was paying the salary of about four and a half employees on personal credit cards. It started to weigh heavily on me, on my marriage, as a father, as a provider, as, a, um, as the CEO, as the founder. And so under that pressure, in that moment, feeling immense just pressure, not knowing how to get through, I did what I think any of you would do. I sat down. And I made a video, auto-tuning JFK's Go to the Moon speech. Because in a moment like that, you need inspiration that you can hold on to. And so rather than working on the website or anything else, I auto-tuned JFK. You will see that video as I walk off, just a little part of it. And it has been an inspiration that I have held on to over this journey. So I am so very excited to be here in Houston with all of you, home of Rice University, where JFK gave the Go to the Moon speech. Now, in that speech, he said, this goal will serve to organize the best of our energies and skills. And I'm so very grateful for the journey that we all have been on together. We created the LXP. It has become a category. We lead it still today, but I appreciate this journey. It has now been a journey of a decade plus. We did not go on it alone, but together. Degreed's LXP was really born in partnership with Bank of America. We then continued to expand. What does this mean? What will it be able to do? And we began pushing on the boundaries of what learner-centric learning will look like in the future. And we built skill review with Unilever. We built native content with Harvard Business Publishing, data connector engine with VW. More recently, our content marketplace in partnership with HSBC, academies with AstraZeneca, pioneering skills inside of a skills-based organization with Ericsson. We are here to continue to push the boundaries of what this thing that was named the LXP is and will become. But we are also, all of us, at the start of a new journey, which is this future of skills. And we often, I think all of us at this point, have heard that um, metaphor, skills as a currency, the new currency of work. And we have tended to think about that in terms of unlocking opportunity as a new um, substitute for credentials. 
Well, really, I want you to think of skills as currency, but think of it as more literally currency, as in your bank account. As we move into this future, how far, how fast you are able to go will be determined by your skills data. How much, how good is that skills data? That is the fuel of this journey we are gonna go on. So I wanna tell you another story. This is the story of Marlon Steele, um, a radical transformation starting as a low intelligence steel manufacturing company they were making the wire baskets that hold bagels and rolls at bakeries, low intelligence steel manufacturing. They transformed their business, have 5 x their business and elevated to higher intelligence steel manufacturing. And they did this by going on a skills journey. Now, they had 39 employees manufacturing on the shop floor and they created their skills matrix. The photo of it on the cork board, 135 skills, five levels, zero, one, two, three, and four. The 39 employees all had the ability to go over and see it and see where they were on each of those skills. And every time they stepped up from a one to a two or a two to a three, they got a micro raise. Hourly employees, they got an extra nine cents per hour, an extra four cents per hour, an extra 11 cents per hour. And this was able to help them break this journey down into the component skills, into the component steps, and walk through it. And as a function of this skills matrix, they took their employees, many of whom, by the time they were done, were making more than six figures, paying off student loans, buying houses, sending their kids to college. It transformed the lives of the employees. It transformed Marlin Steele. Now, Washington Post first covered this story almost a decade ago. I've been telling the story for a long time. It's included in the expertise economy, the book we wrote now five, six years ago. It's not new. So why reach for it now? With everything that is happening in skills, why reach for that decade-old story? Well, because I think it is really telling of this moment we are in. That was a small universe of skills data. 39 employees, 135 skills, that adds up to some odd 26,000 skill combinations. My guess is that we don't have probably anyone, maybe a couple sole proprietors, my guess is we don't have anyone in this audience who has 39 or fewer employees. You all are a galaxy of skills inside of your organization. And to this moment, it has been technologically impossible to operate at that scale. We have not had the technology to do, to inventory and see the skills of our organization at scale. A Fortune 2000 type company, 1,000 skills, seven levels, 120,000 employees, it's nearly a billion combinations of data. And that's if you have a clean taxonomy and a clean leveling system and one data source. The reality is, is that increasingly you probably have many taxonomies, data sources, providers. It is literally billions of data points. But with this democratization of AI, we are now stepping into that future. And it is happening. It's happening really pretty fast. There is now over 100 major employers who for parts of their um, jobs have dropped degree requirements. This skills first approach, it is the better way. So McKinsey and their research looked at skills based hiring. It is more than three and a half times more predictive of on the job success than academic hiring based on academic credentials. And it is more than twice as effective at than hiring based on work experience. That should blow our minds. 99. 6% of every job interview, every job is being hired based on work experience today. And out there available to us in this moment is a way that is twice as predictive of on-the-job success. It's also better inside our organizations at impact retention. It's more than twice as effective at mobilizing internal talent. This skills-first approach is better. In JFK's go to the moon speech, there's a line that I love. He says, 
this adventure will go ahead whether we join in it or not. And when you think of that, those stats, skills-based approach is the better way. It is now an inevitability. This adventure will go ahead whether you join it or not. I do believe this moment is akin to the moment that we faced when social media made it to our doorstep 10, 12, 13 years ago. There was a moment where companies were afraid. There was a moment where companies were debating, is this how we are going to step forward? Are we really going to let a 20-something be the voice and face of our company on Twitter? Doesn't that feel dangerous? Is this really what we're going to do? And they debated for a moment. But if you are Coke and Pepsi, and Pepsi moves and mobilizes and starts amassing its followers and getting direct connection with its consumers, and you're Coke, you no longer have a choice. I mean, I guess you do, but it's adapt or die. Those who move to the skills-based approach will begin to accrue all of those benefits. It is the better way, and for all, everyone else, the decision will become adapt or die. And I say that because I think it affects the timeline. The expectation we should all have is to how fast this is going to happen and I believe it will be faster than any of us imagine. From here, the constraints are really no longer about technology, they're going to be organizational constraints. You know, last year, we were here, we've been talking about this, we had a slide with a skill headline from every year since the beginning of Degreed. We have been talking about this for a long time. So what is Degreed's evolution against this um, opportunity? Well, one, want everyone to know that we really do value the partnership and listen. As we talked last year, there was a slide of our ecosystem approach. And since Lens last year, the feedback has really been, how do we keep all of this very integrated and connected? So what I want to say first is, to understand Degreed and the flag we are planting, a decade ago, content exploded. Many platforms, providers, and modalities. It created the need to have a unifying experience that connected it all together. We created the learning layer that sat on top of the fractured content ecosystem. Well, now this skills world is exploding. It is creating a vibrant ecosystem of different point solutions, providers, data sets, approaches, taxonomies, and creating the need for something to sit on top and unify it all. So what we did for learning, we are now doing for skills. We are doing this from a platform approach, tightly integrated. We are the only platform in the entire world that is building against a framework of helping to tie your daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, semi-annual, annual, this job, your next job, and your full entire lifespan of learning and skills together. You own your data as an end user on Degreed. We are turning back on the portability so that we can have a lifelong portable approach to all of this. Now, I want to show you quickly what some of this looks like, and then we'll talk briefly as we look to the future. So I watched a video this week. It was Steve Jobs. Um, in 1985 in Sweden at an education conference talking about the future of education and representing essentially this voice of what will the computer do to the future of education. And in this short video, he asked, do you know who Alexander the Great's um, mentor was? And for any of you who know, it was Aristotle. And Steve Jobs says, you know, I'm actually quite jealous to be able to have learned at the feet of Aristotle. And what Steve Jobs goes on to say is, he says, I see a day where we will be able to, I can no longer learn, um, ask Aristotle a question. But the day will come where we will be able to take all of the underlying work and put it in a computer and be able to ask Aristotle a question. And it was Steve Jobs in 1985 predicting the moment we are literally in. And that is pretty incredible. 
to 40 years out be able to have that foresight and to be able to see, to gander a guess and a vision of what the future might look like. That's where we are. You will see in degree. It will, top to bottom, we went through um, our roadmap as a team just yesterday. There was no AI roadmap because it is going to be infused in everything. This is, um, you will continue to see more and more of this get turned on inside of the platform. Now, DeGreed's vision is that we become the de facto way that people can answer for all of their education and skills over the entirety of their life. We will never get there until we can serve everyone. So we have invested ourselves deeply inside the last year around deskless learning. It is not enough just to serve our knowledge workers who are sitting at a laptop. We have to get this right for everyone. This is a frontier we are committed to and um, investing ourselves in. So as we think about that platform, the learning, the skills, the, the management of it all, the arcs of uh, daily, weekly, monthly, we really need to enable and empower you to do this effectively at scale, that galaxy. You, many of you have tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of employees, and we are continuing to invest in the enablement of smart and intelligent ways of managing all of this. You will see um, um, those of you who are already live in our skills beta um, know some of this. For those, the rest of you, the role we are playing is really to be the thing that sits on top of this fractured ecosystem. To do that means we have to bring all these different taxonomies and data together, level them, harmonize the taxonomies, and eventually be the thing, the air traffic control tower. We need to exist in a world where when I level up on Pluralsight and then log into Coursera, it knows that I leveled up. To do that, that data has to come someplace get cleaned up and get pushed back down to all parties. That air traffic control, that is the role that we intend to play for all of you. Now, in this world of skills, there are many jobs to be done, many, many different jobs to be done. Just as the world of learning is incredibly diverse, so will, too, be the world of skills. An article does an entirely different job in my life than a podcast does an entirely different job in my life than taking a course does an entirely different job in my life than going to a conference. We don't ever put those in tension in our minds. And then when you think how many people are writing articles, I mean, it is millions, tens of millions, how many podcasts? What I want to dispel is when we think about skills, we tend to collapse our thinking. We tend to think that the future is going to be one data point you have eight skills, 10 skills, 12 skills, clean, singular pieces of data. That is not what the future looks like. It will be vibrant, it'll be diverse. There are many, many jobs to be done. We will do some, but we are taking an ecosystem approach where we are connecting all of the different innovations together. And Agreed continues to be the only platform that has fully integrated with the longer arcs of deep upskilling. So today, this is our academies and our skills marketplace, as well as, as we look to the future, education benefits, tuition assistance, and otherwise. All right, we have just a minute or two left together. Getting to the moon was really actually, like, quite literally, a pretty straight shot. Not to um, diminish how complex it was uh, to be done inside of the 1960s, um, but it was a pretty straight shot. We've landed man on the moon, hoping to get back soon. But as we think of where we are as an industry, you know, the innovations around learning, that really was the moonshot. Skills is akin to Mars. We have truly, truly, truly some of the world's leading organizations, those who have innovated first and furthest, and there is still not a single skill-based organization in the entire world. No one has gotten there yet. We are on a journey that is more complex. This is not going to be as simple as a straight shot. The amount of resourcing is much greater. The journey is further and harder. 
but that also means it's more exciting. And this future of being a skills-based organization, um, while more complex, is going to be even bigger still. I want to tell you a quick story. This is of one of our nonprofit um, clients and one of their end users, Lindsay. We're going to start with the individual, as we always do at Degreed. So Lindsay, um, just to give you a little bit of her story. Her parents um, divorced when they were young. Her mother got addicted to drugs, ended up in jail. She, to keep her younger siblings out of foster care, essentially became de facto mom, raising her siblings. She ended up getting married pretty young. Husband became abusive. To leave that marriage, had to go to a shelter. Was working late shifts at the post office. Came through Degreed um, with our nonprofit clients and got upskilled. She got placed as a web designer, more than doubled her salary, changing her life and the lives of her kids in the process. Now that's an incredible story. It's a story that isn't singular, but it is very special. But we've heard stories like that time and time and time again. I came through the world of higher education. That has been the promise and the aspiration. That's always been the hope. But let me tell you the difference. Higher education is replete with these stories, but it takes four years and tens of thousands of dollars. Lindsay's story, nine weeks, $200. When we get to targeted upskilling, it is the better way. It's more efficient, it's more targeted. We can deploy talent and change lives with more efficiency. We can change our teams and our organizations with fewer dollars and less time. It is an absurdity. We have, some of you literally have tens of thousands of employees in a single job title getting paid the same thing. I hope you sit with that absurdity. It is absurd. But the barrier has been, because of course, 10,000 people don't have the same skills, but why should they be, if they have different skills, why are we paying them all the same? It has been, we have been incapable of discerning that next unit down, but now we can. So for individuals, we can change lives. Teams and organizations, as we get to the skills-based level of atomic unit, we will organize our teams, we will promote based on skill, we will reward based on skill, we will do performance based on skill, we will do learning based on skill. And as individual organizations get this data, deploy this way, get better at it, we will be able to aggregate that up at the industry level and start to report on skills benchmarking across organizations. As we get good at this at the industry level, you will see countries and states mobilized to this model. And as countries start to do it, it will shift the economy of the world. Jobs are the organizing unit of careers, companies, and the economy. And we are about to exist in a future where skills are the organizing unit of careers, companies, and ultimately the economy. Really can't say how big that change is. We are shifting from an economy that has been organized based on jobs to an economy that will be based on skills. Now, just like Steve Jobs being able to peer into the future, it is actually really quite hard. So I want to take just a minute and have all of you envision with me the future as best as we can. What is it going to look like? Well, I want to give you maybe a heuristic for thinking about it. The time has come for lifelong learning to grow up. Today, we lifelong learn like most of us exercise, which is kinda sorta. It isn't good enough, not anymore. Now, the answer isn't to exist in the university model forever, but I want to use that 
is a metaphor for us to be able to envision what the future is going to look like. So what do you, in your own head, believe that a lifelong university might look like? What are the analogs? As you think, higher education, universities, they're this deeply vertically integrated thing. They are admissions, they're a filtering system, they're a cohorting system. There is courses and syllabi, there is textbooks and professors, there's TAs and peers and cohorts. There are buildings and facilities and desks and equipment. They feed us, they house us. There's career services, there's mental health services, there's alumni services. As you think about that analog, we've only checked the box on one or two. We've taken the idea of a course and we have democratized it. We've taken the idea of credit and we've innovated on it. But when I think of the future and look at this, just think, just try this on for a second. What would it feel like for now to always be in a model where you're always in a semester of learning? How does that start to make lifelong learning feel different? You today, from here forward, all of you, I'm just inducting you into the degreed lifelong university. You all now are in the winter 2024 semester. And what are you gonna do with that time? Because guess what, that semester closes. It closes in another month. And then you'll be in the spring 2024 semester. But when I come and look at your transcript a year from now as your manager, as a hiring manager, what am I gonna see that you did in your winter 2024 semester? As we think about the university, lifelong learning is this model, it is going to grow up what lifelong learning looks like. And that is why Degreed exists. I will leave you with a quote that I've shared with you all many times. It's my favorite in the world, Eric Hoffer. In times of great change, it is learners who inherit the earth. While the learned find themselves beautifully equipped for a world that no longer exists. Degreed exists to build the model of lifelong learning for the learners. That's the future. I hope to see you there. Thank you all very much. Ladies and gentlemen, well, space is there, and we're going to climb it. And the moon and the planets are there. New hopes for knowledge and peace are there. And therefore, as we set sail, we ask God's blessing on the greatest adventure. We choose to go to the moon and mysticate and do the other thing. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. We choose to go to the moon and this decay and do the other thing not because they are easy but because they are hard